So let's step back to 1637, when René Descartes famously wrote, Je pense donc je suis, I think, therefore I am. Now, when he says, I, we all understand what he means here. We think, but what exactly is the I? If you think it's obvious what the self is, get ready for some eye openers, because we're going to see how the self emerges from computations in the brain and how it can morph in unexpected ways. So let's start by noting that nothing seems more obvious than you feel like a single entity. But that's strange, because you're actually built out of 36 trillion individual cells communicating through chemical and electrical signals. But you don't feel like that. You don't feel like a swirling bath of seven billion 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 atoms not to mention that you're constantly shedding atoms and gaining new ones such that your body is composed of entirely new atoms about every seven years despite all this you feel like one stable thing you feel like you you have a name you have a history and a memory and a personality you have desires and your unique personality. You have a self, and that self seems to be located right behind your eyeballs. Now, this is wild, right? Because consider other scenarios in which there are lots of pieces and parts working together. Let's say I go out to some big field and I set up a bunch of springs and pulleys and levers and I start hooking everything up and this turns that and that affects that and this lever pulls that thing and I start adding more and more parts and this big crazy machine gets larger and larger. Here's the question, at what point do I add one more lever and I say, aha, now this is no longer a Frankensteinian collection of trillions of individual pieces, but suddenly it has the experience of a living unity. Or just take your computer, it's made of billions of transistors and resistors and capacitors. It's sending zeros and ones all around. But the question is, does your MacBook Pro have a sense of itself? Do you think it ever aspires to be something greater in its life? Or does it feel a sense of embarrassment at its performance sometimes? Or does it ever desire to be loved by another computer? Now, the reason your sense of self is so mysterious is because your brain is just made up of pieces and parts, cells with straightforward properties. Each cell by itself is just doing basic cell things. So why does this giant collection, when hooked up and interacting in the right way, have a unified sense of a single you interacting with the world through time? You have this conscious perception of yourself as a thing such that the 36 trillion cells that comprise you can collaborate to go to a dance club tonight or meet friends at the coffee shop or go to a bookstore or take a road trip across the nation acting like a single thing. So why do you feel like a unified entity? Now, the answer, presumably, is an evolutionary one. Those cells are all hanging together, and this collection has to take the whole vast, complex space of possibilities and crunch it down to a single decision. For example, your body can go to the left or go to the right to get around the tree, but you can't do both. And that's why you have to squeeze down all the chattering of billions of neurons to a single choice and control your trillions of cells to do something that makes sense in the outside world. I've mentioned before that the brain is typically celebrated for its parallel processing. But in fact, just as importantly, it should be celebrated for its serialization. In other words, its ability to conclude something, to decide something from the vast space of possibilities, to take all the rumbling trillions of cells and get to a single conclusion about what to do next. 